Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a uh, paper, um, sort of a paper review. Um, this is really cool paper. Sorry. Go back here. I've got a lot of papers open here. Um, let's see if I can keep my camera. Okay, there we go. So um, this is paper by Meta, uh, New York University, and Cal Berkeley. And uh, they, they have this thing called Thinking LLMs, which is uh, basically like a, a, a training regime, I guess you could call it, um, that basically sort of teaches these models how to think. Um, and you know, I, I sort of suspect that this could have some similarity to how uh, OpenAI's O1 is kind of working. Um, basically, O1 uh, is described as like uh, using reinforcement learning to sort of think through problems and generate uh, these chains of thoughts that um, are helpful for solving a problem, basically. So um, I'll kind of go through it. Uh, basically, they just say that, you know, chain of thought is proven to be um, useful for some tasks, uh, not necessarily all tasks, but for tasks like coding and mathematics, um, the uh, ability to think through a problem and list out sort of the, the thought process can be really valuable. So um, basically what they do is they sample, um, they sample multiple uh, thought processes and answers from the model. So um, basically if we go down here to this, this uh, diagram. So initially they have like basically a, a data set um, with an instruction and they sample multiple outputs. So basically they prompt the model. I can show you the prompt down here. So um, respond to the following user query in a comprehensive and detailed way. You can write down your thought process before responding. Write your thoughts after here's my thought process and write your response after here's my response. So um, this is what they call like a generic thought prompt um, and then here, uh, respond to the following user query in a comprehensive and detailed way, but first write down your internal thoughts. This must include your draft response and its evaluation. After this, write your final response. So this is like a two response self-critic type prompt, which is interesting. Um, I'm not sure when they use uh, which one, but basically um, they're gonna sample multiple outputs and they they basically evaluate um, just the responses using another like strong LLM, um, and by strong I mean uh, a very good LLM. So something like GPT four O um, or Claude Sonnet three point five would be a good um, option. And by doing this, they they basically get these preference pairs, um, and once you once you get these preference pairs you can use that to to train the original model um, using something called uh, dpo uh, which uh, i believe is uh, direct uh, preference optimization i believe so and and with dpo is very similar to rlhf um, if you're familiar with rlhf it's basically the method that sort of made Chad GPT what it is. It took LLMs basically to another level. Um, allows It basically allows them to um, sort of match a, a, uh, a data, or sort of respond in a way that um, aligns with these preference pairs uh, in a much better way. Um, and, you know, I'm sure we're, we're probably, RLHF is probably not the end all be all for training these models, but it's a pretty good tool um, that we have in our toolbox. And um, this sort of method is like, a, it's a very clever way to generate um, large amounts of data. And then what's interesting is you can improve this model and iteratively um, train it. So we have kind of like this loop here, this sort of self-improvement loop. Um, and uh, really, I think, uh, we, we'll get to the results in a second, but uh, this could be a, a setup that 
you know, it, it could have a lot of potential in the future if we scale up um, this model, because I, b I believe in this paper they use like 8 billion parameter models, which is like pretty small. Um, so yeah, um, let's go down here. We also experiment with a more specific thought prompt in figure two that specifies that the thought should contain a draft response. Um, and they say this gives us more control over the content of the thoughts, but also requires expert knowledge about what type of thoughts are helpful in LLM. So um, they also had this, the, they mentioned internal thoughts, which um, I'm not really sure. Let me, let me look and see what that is. Uh, the thought part will be hidden from the, the end user and only the response part will be provided to them. This differentiates our outputs from chain of thought prompting where our reasoning steps will typically. Um, so I think here they're kind of saying that, you know, basically they, they don't output the, uh, the thought chain. Um, but I'm not sure if that's when they use the model or um, I'm not really, I'm a little bit confused. Um, okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that uh, section is mentioning. Um, so now we have optimizing thoughts via pre preference optimization. Okay, this is uh, basically they're just, just uh, explaining how this uh, DPO process works. So um, they start with their original model, which is uh, this model right here at the first iteration, before the first iteration is called the seed model. Um, and that's just basically their initial model. That's It's been pre-trained, um, you know, it's just like you could probably take the, the llama and struct model um, and do this. So, so they basically, uh, you need a, a data set of user instructions, that's X of I, and then you have this thought prompt um, that you add to each example, and that's gonna output um, Z, Z and Y, um, and Z, Z is the thought, and the, the final response is uh, Y. So um, basically you just, you run this on a data set, and you get this, uh, these pairs, um, so, Let's see, what is this? Uh, one, two, judge. Okay, so you feed this input and output without the, the thought process to this um, strong model right here, which uh, I don't really know what this uh, Greek symbol is, but you're gonna get this, uh, basically the, the, the output, which is, um, uh, which is uh, these preference pairs right there, so. Yeah, so um, they they talk about just kind of like details, uh, length control. Apparently, they um, like they're saying sometimes the judge model favors longer responses, um, which is kind of a problem. Um, looks like they have some sort of mechanism to sort of like normalize the responses to to be of uh, similar length. Okay, so they, they ba yeah, they, they basically have like this, uh, um, they penalize longer responses um, with the final score, which to me that seems like a bit of a hack, um, but you know, it, apparently it, it works okay. Um, so yeah, so they did this um, with Llama 3, 8B instruct. Um, Looks like they say llama 3ab instruct and llama 3ab instruct. So I think that's a typo here. Um, maybe maybe this was just the regular llama 3 or, um, oh, okay, so it's, uh, they use thought prompting, which I'm guessing is the more detailed thought prompt that we saw earlier. Um, so yeah, so, we see the results here that they've got. They, they use a, a packet eval in Arena Hard, which um, I think it's kind of like an instruction following data set. I'm not totally sure about the, uh, you know, the exact details of this data set, but 
Um, yeah, they, they get pretty impressive performance. It looks like, so you've got your baseline here um, of 24.9 and 20.6 for Lava 3AB um, and compare that to GPT-4. And this looks like a, a June model. I'm not sure if that's uh, the original GPT-4 or that's the, this, this current 2024 cycle GPT-4 because GPT-4 has changed drastically since being introduced. Um, so that may be worth looking into. Um, which GPT-4 this actually is. But regardless, if you have an 8 billion parameter model um, outperforming uh, any of OpenAI's recent models, I mean, that's incredibly um, impressive. So we see here that it uh, looks like the, the TPO method, um, which is the, this method, um, thought process optimization, is outperforming GPT-4 on Alpaca eval and um, not on Arena Hard. Uh, but 20% improvement over GPT-4 is pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, it looks like this is, uh, we see pretty good, uh, you know, improvement over um, iterations. They only did, did like four iterations, which, you know, maybe that's due to performance kind of leveling off, and I don't really know the, uh, computational requirements to do this. I can't imagine, I mean, depending on how much data they use, um, I don't know what the, their original training set is, but, you know, there's nothing too crazy about this, assuming that you, you know, you're not training the, the judge here, as far as I know. Um, you're just training this 8B model, which is pretty, you know, it's not, not too big of a deal to do. Um, so yeah, um, and they've got more results here. Um, this is win rate uh, against GPT-4. Uh, and it looks like I believe 50% you know, is kind of like at, at tie and then you have um, anything above 50% will be considered, you know, higher performance um, compared to GPT-4. Um, Yeah, so th uh, this is pretty, uh, I think they're kind of just discussing the results here. Um, looks like math, we thus append only the output number to problems. Uh, so it looks like this, uh, The, the method does not work well in math is what it seems like. Um, so that's kind of interesting, um, especially given that like models like O1 um, tend to do better in math. So I guess that's an interesting takeaway here that it's, it seems to be getting better at instruction following, but not necessarily math. Uh, so yeah, um, interesting. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do a stream um, on this paper because I thought it was really cool. Um, I may consider trying to implement this uh, maybe with like a smaller model um, and seeing you know what, what type of performance we can get with a kind of a very small language model. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm gonna start doing more uh, kind of paper reviews like this. Um, if you have any questions about the paper, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.